The first episode of Comic Girls makes the bold, but much appreciated decision of using its first scene to explain to the viewer many of the reasons they will be disappointed in it and apologizing to them in advance. The art sucks. The characters do nothing for me. The story is boring. The characters don't make realistic high school girls. The title sucks. The story is predictable. The protagonists are unrelatable. And honestly, it's not that great. Of course, this was all under the guise of critiquing the main character's manga, but it would all prove to be rather prophetic. I think the first scene demonstrates something that's going to be a consistent problem with the show from here on pretty well, so I figure I'll just go over it now. And that's that the directing is really bad. Like, the first scene opens up with all these pretty serene establishing shots that feel calm and contemplative, but it's all set up to a pretty lackluster comedy scene and doesn't build off that mood at all. And I honestly think that it wasn't even trying to build that mood in the first place because every part of this show, with the exception of certain moments involving the only good character, have the exact same flat direction. Emotional moments, comfy moments, tense moments, all of them. Well, just look at them. It's all boring to look at, it doesn't convey any specific mood. Other than that, the art is close to passable. It's pretty bog-standard discount Kyo Annie Moe shit, but it has these freakishly well-painted backgrounds, like, these backgrounds are really fucking good. And okay, this is going to make me sound insane, but I think they are so good that they wrap back around to being bad. Because they just feel so out of place with the hyper-generic looking characters, and it's weird to look at. And it's hard not to pay attention when the backgrounds are usually the most interesting thing going on on screen. And that's including the subtitles. Anyway, so her editor thinks that, despite her lack of experience, she has some sort of talent. Which apparently doesn't involve her ability to draw, or write, or conceptualize an interesting story. So they tell the main character, who's pretty much the most generic, self-confidence-lacking moe blob you could imagine, that they might improve if they move into a dorm with a whole bunch of other mangaka, who happen to also be cute high school girls, because of course they fucking are. So now it's time to introduce the other three waifus of the show, in case you're not really into the girl who by the show's own admission looks like she's in grade school. We meet Waifu Archetype 3 Alpha, the energetic, kind, friendly girl with no apparent personality flaws that is always showing off her big breasts. She's the kind of girl who the writers would probably describe as quirky, despite not possessing a single character quirk except for Liking food, I guess? We also meet the other two characters, including the only good one, but apparently the writers didn't feel like it was important to actually establish their characters in their establishing character scene. Also, why are the backgrounds so good? The show tries this gag where the main character imagines all the different ways things could go wrong, and all of them are based on some manga cliche or whatever. It's not funny for the most part. The only thing that made me crack a chuckle was at the end when she imagines all of them being like her and it's really depressing, especially because it ended with that nice visual gag of the train leaving without her. Yep, this this anime had a decent joke. That's not, that's not gonna happen very many more times this episode. So she walks to the manga dorm, reusing all the same backgrounds as the scene with the two characters from before. Not that I'm complaining, they're good backgrounds and we even get a few new backgrounds and they're pretty nice to look at. But I'd also really appreciate it if this anime would not do these hideous parallax shots. They almost make me not like the backgrounds. When she's walking, it does this weird thing at one point, where it cuts between multiple shots of the same street corner, almost like it was jump cutting between places to show she was traveling a long distance. But it was evident that she made very little distance, and it was actually kind of clever directing, but then they continue to jump cut and use backgrounds without any rhyme or reason for the rest of the scene, so I'm convinced that it was an accident. Also, what the fuck is with this anime and doing that thing where it just cuts to a background with no characters on screen so that it doesn't have to animate something? She enters the manga dorm and gets expositioned by the landlady, like you do, and there's a bad joke about her looking younger than she is, and just like every other part of the show that came before this, it's padded out way too long. We're seven and a half minutes in, and nothing has happened, and that's not including a theme song. There isn't any theme song this episode. She learns she's rooming with big boobs, and they bond, and she apparently has no friends before this, so she overreacts to getting offered a, a fucking donut. I noticed at this point that the anime likes doing this weird thing, where it shows the characters in panels. 
like they're in a manga, and most of the time I feel like they're doing it just to try and keep us from getting bored, but like, once or twice an episode, it does something cool. Like, here where the manga panel shrinks to indicate that she's kind of, she's looking inward, she's overthinking things, she's in her own head. And then when, you know, she gets touched, uh, you know, she starts thinking about the world around her again, and the panel expands. And that was a really nice comedic moment, it was a good directing decision, so I guess they do have some good ideas in this, so you know, gotta give them credit for that. So the other two come in and we learn what each character draws for a living. Moe Blob draws Four Coma, Big Boobs draws Shoujo, Glasses draws Fanservice Trash, Alright, for clarification, I realized while editing and while actually writing uh, later parts of this video that this girl does not actually wear glasses for the entirety of the show. It's really only in just the latter half of episode one. So after a certain point in this video, I will begin referring to her as Porn Girl instead of glasses. And the only good character draws Shonen. And she's not really that great, but I'm just going to call her Best Girl because, you know... In you know, brevity's sake, it's two syllables. We get some cheap gags like how big boobs can draw pretty girls but can't draw male faces, but the joke is just left there. You can really tell the difference in wit between the writers of this show and the writer of Gekon Shoujo, who I could actually see making this joke work really well. Maybe they'd follow up with Moe Blob asking if she, if she can try helping her draw the faces, and then the art styles clash, and then one of them would try to fix it in a really dumb way, and, they build on the original premise, but this isn't Gekon Shoujo. The jokes aren't that funny. A few are, but most are like this one, good for a cheap laugh if even that. Lots of them straight up fall flat. There are a ton that I'm not even mentioning, because they're just so not worth mentioning. Best Girl reveals here why she's the only good character, and it's because of her gimmick. She has a habit of saying cheesy lines as if she were a shonen protagonist, which is fun. I enjoy this. They don't have the wit to pull it off properly, but it's a fun idea and it brings out the best in their staff. Most of the scarce, interesting directing moments come when she's spouting off a cheesy line, most of the witty jokes seem to surround her antics, and it's the most interesting and attention-grabbing character trait across the entire cast. And I, I think the only interesting and attention-grabbing character trait uh, across the entire cast. Moe Blob says a bunch of cliches that you would expect her to, and then we learn that this is not just a cute girl show, it's a Yuri Bait cute girl show. Moe Blob likes glasses and Big Boobs likes Best Girl. This, the second one I can kind of get behind because there's comedic potential behind the whole shoujo shonen thing, and they try to capitalize on it later, but it works out about as well as you can imagine, and yeah, her, her boobs are going to be hanging out like that for the rest of the episode, so buckle up. Moe Blob and Big Boobs visit the other two. It turns out Glasses used to want to write kids manga, but all of her art was really mature looking, and people thought it was sexy, so she got transferred to a more adult-oriented magazine, where she wasn't happy at first. But then she learned how much her fans loved her manga, so she began to love her new job. This is a really well-conceived character arc that I would really like to watch, so it's a shame that they decided they would just use it as her backstory, which they explain with barely more detail than I did just now. The two audience surrogates were crying from it, but the directing was so flat and her performance so milk toast, and the story delivered so poorly that I doubt anyone who was watching the show actually cried. After that, they work on Best Girl's generic shonen manga, and can someone please explain to me why the hell this manga has better art, a better established tone, better shot composition, and better character designs than the actual fucking show? Whatever. Best Girl continues to do her bits, and the others react to her. It's about a 50-50 split between duds and decently funny jokes. The main character keeps screwing up and crying about it, but Best Girl picks up her slack, and she learns that she can rely on people, I think? Even though this is an example of her trying to help someone else but failing to do so effectively, and so it's less her relying on others and more others relying on themselves instead of her? Either way, we get introduced to her as someone who wants to get better at manga, but she does nothing to improve at manga by the end of the first episode, nor does she learn that there's more to life than drawing manga or anything like that. Basically, her character motivation has nothing to do with anything she does this episode, which assists the terrible directing in making sure the audience feels absolutely nothing. Screenwriting is hard. I'll be honest, there was this montage near the end where I was kind of feeling a little something, but then I saw one of the manga panels again and all of my attention was sucked towards that. 
And when your story is so uninteresting that the most engaging part of it loses to the generic faux manga you made within its universe, that says something about the quality of the show you're making. That feeling when you try to do a quasi-artsy shot, but your in-universe anime figurines look more like real people than your characters do, so you accidentally make it look like a bunch of people are standing behind them and you confuse the audience. Okay, and seriously, when your backgrounds are this detailed compared to your bland-looking characters who are doing nothing interesting, my eyes are drawn towards the backgrounds and I lose track of what's happening. Until, at least, Best Girl shows up. Her writing is terrible, but she makes me smile and she makes me pay attention, so bless her heart. W wait, wait. What the... What the... F what, the what the fuck? My heart cries out, what do I call the pain? They can't even fucking animate a plain translation. So here we have the OP, and it starts with them just showing background, which is probably for the best. Uh, then we get to this picture frame here, where the characters within it are better designed than the main cast. And uh, yeah, that just happened. Overall, the song's pretty alright. Musically, there's nothing offensive going on, but the opening sequence itself is pretty mediocre. Nothing, nothing to really say. It, it, you've seen everything that this opening sequence has to offer if you've seen any amount of anime before this. So they get off the train, and you know, I was under the impression that best girl with big boobs was a thing, and that glasses with moe blob was a thing. So these guys can't even yuri bait properly. Um, Unless they were going for a shipping war, in which case I hope no one cares about these characters enough to get mad about this. Anyways, they go shopping for supplies and manga and stuff like that. So far the episode's been alright, I guess. The directing's lame and there's nothing interesting happening, but it's comfy and relaxing and the scenery's nice and that's what Slice of Lives are supposed to do. Wait, is that Best Girl's manga? Ho Holy shit, open it! There might be something interesting in there! God damn it. They go get lunch. The jokes are bad. They try to do this minimalist animation thing, but it looks awful. This... this... this scene here... This here is inexcusable. Moe Blob looks up, and we see a close-up of Best Girl's face, with no background for context. Naturally, we assume Best Girl is staring down at Moe Blob really close. But no, it's just showing her eyes, doing a discount trigger star sparkle to indicate that she's focused and excited, and then she runs in the opposite direction which she apparently was already facing. It's so blatant and immersion breaking. This is... How, how do, how does this make it past the fucking storyboarding sti- on with the episode. Hey guys, anatomy is hard. And I know that I harp on the mismatch in art styles between the backgrounds and the characters a lot, but she, she looks fucking photoshopped in this. Jesus Christ. So there's this moment where Best Girl and Big Boobs have doodled on the same piece of paper, and Moe Blob hesitantly makes her own doodle right next to it. And it's a really nice, subtle character moment that shows not only that she's becoming part of the group, but that she's also beginning to see herself as being closer to the others, as a professional manga artist. As obvious as it is that no one had any passion for this anime, except for apparently the background artists, the people working on it have some actual talent and are capable of coming up with some really good ideas. And it makes me wonder what these people could have done if they had more time for pre-production and they weren't just working on a piece of assembly line gray sludge. They look at some screen tones and there's a few half-decent jokes. And then they look at masking tape and you know what, I'm just gonna let this play. Yeah, that happened. And then this happens. Fuck! We were all fucking thinking it. Why did you ruin this nice character moment with a good feel and a well-established tone? It was it was making me feel an emotion for once in this show. After that, there's this joke about how these girls think that everyone but Moe Blob is a manga artist, and that Moe Blob is an aspiring one, and honestly, this is this is the funniest the show has been. Uh, it, 
it makes more glaring mistakes, but this episode is genuinely better written, I think. Its jokes make me chuckle with some more consistency, and it has this comfy series of varied character interactions that makes Slice of Life what it is. The cast is also, well, I don't know, I don't want to say it's shining, but at least it's, they're playing off each other functionally in more ways than the last episode where they practically didn't at all. There's a lot of little jokes and tiny character moments I'm skipping over, and if nothing else, the show is doing a good job of making sure that it goes from one little scene to the other without much fluff, you know, if it throws enough to the wall, more of it's gonna stick even if it's not the stickiest stuff in the world. The scenes aren't well done most of the time, but it does go a long way towards making it watchable, you know? On an unrelated note, this show does a really good job of making this place feel like a real art store. I'm not sure if you've ever been inside of a Blick before, but they did a really good job of capturing the, uh, the sort of atmosphere it has, making the store feel stocked, and so I really gotta hand it to the background painters, again. Uh, they're, they're really working their asses off for this show, I gotta say. Alright, so just a little uh, correction here. I'm not entirely sure if this is true, but while I was editing, I came to the sneaking suspicion that a lot of the backgrounds, especially in this art shop, aren't actually painted, but instead are photographs that have been put through a bunch of filters. I don't know how I would tell that for sure, but it certainly looks like that. So, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe the background painters don't deserve as much credit as I'm saying they do. I mean, there, there are a lot of really good backgrounds that are obviously painted, uh, but, eh, I don't know, I just thought it was worth mentioning. I've spent a lot of the first half of this episode ragging on little things, and I think you get the picture. Best Girl is likable, and 90% of the good scenes involve her, the show is incompetently directed with a few moments where interesting ideas shine through, the art is shit except for and yet somehow including the backgrounds, the jokes aren't that funny most of the time, and it's just incredibly bland and uninteresting, so I'll just cover broader topics for the rest of the video. I've noticed that they really like to use Moe Blob to try and trick you into thinking that this show has depth. They have her comment on whatever just happened to her, and spout a bunch of cliches about how fun it was and how it makes her want to work harder, but, but it's all just so generic and fake. It also does that Japanese thing, where it thinks explaining the joke somehow makes it funnier and... I don't know, maybe it's a taste thing, but that ruins a comedy for me. There's a fine line between pointing out something funny and trying to explain something to the audience, which they already would have thought is funny, and this anime spends way too much time doing the latter. Not that this show isn't funny at all, there are good jokes. Like here, when she introduces herself to the class, and then it pans down to her showing that it was just her imagination, and she is only hoping that it goes that well. It has good comedic timing, and it's unexpected. The show makes me laugh, but it's only a few times an episode that it's anything more than a cheap chuckle, and there is so much time between those laughs that I can't help but wonder if I'd be having more fun watching a show that sells itself on being actually funny, rather than just a show that contains jokes out of what feels like obligation. And it does honestly feel bad to rag on this show because sometimes I am actually engaged. Like the scene where she's getting interrogated by her classmates, but just because it is entertaining doesn't mean it's entertaining enough to justify watching it when I could be catching up on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure I've been meaning to finish Stardust Crusaders, or, you know, I, I hear Great Teacher Onizuka is pretty funny but I haven't watched that. This second episode is not a bad episode of anime, but it's not a good one either. And there are so many good shows out there that I haven't watched. So I have to ask myself, whenever I find myself watching a show like this, is this worth my time? Or could I be watching something that is going to be making me happier than this show is making me? There's this nice little character moment where Moe Blob sees Big Boobs run off with some friends, and she thinks about how Big Boobs fits in with others, but she doesn't. But then she gets greeted by Best Girl and Porno Girl, and it's like, oh, she does have people she fits in with. And it builds off the first half where they bonded really well, and then they have a sweet little heart-to-heart -heart that's super ham-fisted, but, you know, it's sweet anyways. And hey, I'm actually smiling a little. And then there are some more good character moments, and decent jokes, and honestly, I found myself enjoying this show a lot more than the first episode. But once again, the absolute most this show makes me feel is barely at all. It's not bad, at times maybe even a little bit good, but there's so little worth remembering, so little that has any real substance or impact. It's popcorn anime, to be eaten, 
digested in a second, and then forgotten about. The next episode opens on an establishing shot of some shitty CG cars before going to a scene of Moe Blob's editor talking to her about her new manga storyboard. She's writing a gourmet manga, but the writing is awful. She goes to the dorm, and then the rest of the cast takes turns roasting her. And then we shift out of the current plotline before it can go anywhere, by them deciding to give her a bunch of makeovers, and of course this involves its fair share of Yuri bait. After she tries them on, Best Girl comes in to roast her some more, and that's about a third of the episode right there. The second third starts with about two minutes of meaningless fluff, followed by them doing that joke where the main character walks in on what looks like two other characters fucking, but then she realizes that they're doing something innocent, and Big Boobs is acting as a model for Porno Girls manga, which means, you guessed it, more excuses to show off her boobs. Yay! I'm gonna be real here. I skipped over most of this upcoming part because it was just that uncomfortable to sit through, but honestly, is there anything for me to tell you that you don't already know just by watching this footage? There's one part near the end uh, where Moe Blob tells Porn Girl it's okay to have small boobs because what makes a flat girl cute is the way she gets embarrassed over her small breasts, which made me smile because it reminded me of when Denki Gai no Honyasan did a similar joke but ten times better. Oh, and I'd be remiss not to show you the best part of the episode where Best Girl tries to show what she thinks a girl's ideal body type is, and it's a really well done visual gag, I liked that. After all of that, we finally get back to the main plot of the episode, where Moe Blob is self-conscious about her work, and then overworks herself, trying to improve it and trying to catch up with everyone else. Uh, which is shown through this incredibly bland montage of, is that a body pillow? Anyways, Moe Blob isn't eating, and then they get her to eat in happy, happy, feel-good times. Uh, then she shows her manuscript to her editor to show that she had improved, but her ideas are just as awful as last time, if not worse, which is the kind of ending used in a gag manga like Gek on Shoujo, where you don't care about the characters growing, and the writers just thought it was okay to use it in a show where they try to get us to care about the characters' growth. Yeah, I see no problem with that! Well, those are the first three episodes of Comic Girls. The second one manages the dizzying heights of decently entertaining, and the other two are either bad or trashy and bad. I kind of already told you my overall opinion at the end of episode two, and it hasn't really changed, but there are a few things that I never got around to mentioning. The first is that the color design of this show is genuinely quite good, and it goes a long way towards making it actually look pretty nice at times. Second is the soundtrack, which I completely forgot to mention because it's just that forgettable. Third is that I really do like what they do with the next episode previews. That's some creative use of your show's visual themes right there. And finally, I really fucking love the ED. The colors are even better than the show itself, it's well shot, and it's just really gorgeous overall. It's the part of every episode I enjoy the most. Earlier in the video, I said that I don't see any reason to watch this show because there are so many better shows to watch, and I would be remiss not to tell you any of them that are kind of similar. And as a matter of fact, there are two that I'd really like to talk about. The first is Denki Gai no Honyasan, a nice little slice of life comedy about a bunch of nerds who work in a manga store in Nakihabara. The character designs and art are much better in this show, and the characters are much more original. But what really makes this show different from Comic Girls is that it's actually kind of well written. It always makes me smile, and while it suffers from a lot of the issues I feel slice of life's tend to in general that kind of turn me off from them, it has so many more genuine laughs in every episode. It's something that I sometimes come back to whenever I want to watch something that's comfy and fun. The characters are great, there's romance that actually develops, and interesting things happen in it. The first episode is about the characters going to an underground event where one of the store members greets random people and psychically determines what kind of porn they should buy. I also think it scratches some of the same itches as comic girls, due to the similar concept behind it, you know, a bunch of nerdy characters interacting in fun ways. And hell, there's even an episode where one of the employees uh, is getting helped with her manga by all the other employees, and it's done way better than anything in Comic Girls. Uh, it's not perfect, hell, I'm not even prepared to tell you that this show is great or anything like that, but it is good, it's competent, and it's fun, which puts it leagues above Comic Girls. But there's one other anime that I think you guys should check out that I actually discovered while I was finishing up this script. You see, the studio that made Comic Girls, Nexus, has only made one other anime, without collaborating with another team, that is. It's a short-form, four-coma adaptation called Wakaba Girl, with episodes that are only six minutes long. The script sucks, but everything else about the show is on point. The directing is punchy and incredibly creative. The cinematography is absolutely gorgeous and keeps your eyes glued to the screen. The colors are beyond beautiful and the backgrounds are absolutely amazing, not to mention they actually mesh well with the characters. 
This is a show that I would actually recommend to people solely based on its visual presentation. Considering how there are three years between these two shows with nothing in between, it might not be too wild to guess that they had some huge staff overhaul, but no. It's pretty much all of the same people working on it. It's even got the exact same color designer, which I guess actually makes a lot of sense considering how both shows have great color design. It makes me wonder what happened. Were they not prepared for having to make three times as much anime in what I imagine was a lot less than three times the time? Was it interference from the producers? Were they trying to play it safe? I don't know, but honestly, I can see so much of what made Wakaba Girl good in Comic Girls when it's at its best. Whenever the visual humor or the directing of Comic Girls feels on point, the two shows have very similar styles. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Comic Girls may be a piece of cynical, derivative, flaming garbage, but it's made by some shockingly competent people, ones that are capable of making a visual masterpiece. And in Comic Girls, they showed us they had enough creativity to come up with a couple of good character ideas, and that sometimes they can crank out a genuinely good joke, even if it's not nearly often enough. It makes me think that Nexus is still trying to figure themselves out as a studio, and that when it does, it might become something worth having on your radar. I know it's on mine, 